Hello, bonjour, and ahoy. I'm Roger Hilton, Defense and Security Research Fellow at Globesec, coming to you from Vienna, Austria. A few weeks back, NATO defense ministers announced the creation of a NATO space center at Aircom in Rammstein, Germany. As recent events like Russian satellite Cosmos 2543 have, have proven, space is going to be a contested area for a while. Here with us tonight to, to shed some light on this is Dr. James Ferguson of the University of Manitoba and one of Canada's most distinguished aerospace experts. Dr. Ferguson, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So, Dr. Ferguson, let's get right into it. My first question for you is, what will the leadership resemble at the new NATO Space Centre? Uh, this initiative, which is the logical fall-on to NATO's recognition of space as a distinct military domain, which in turn was preceded by U.S. recognition, likely an American initiative in its origins, and you have to recognize that the U.S. is the dominant space power with a full range of space assets. It is likely the command center will be American-led, drawing largely, but ex not exclusively, on American space-based intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance assets, with the European allies filling key secondary posts. Probably the model would be the NATO Missile Defense Command structure co-located at Ramstein, which also primarily relies on American and European deployed missile defense capabilities. In addition, it will likely mirror in some ways the U.S. Space Center and the new U.S. Space Command, in which several allies are already participants. Finally, I think it's important to note that the Space Center will simply be a sophisticated ground station, receiving key intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance data for distribution to its various operational commands from national and civilian-based assets. Uh, pardon me, civilian space-based assets. It's highly unlikely that NATO will actually acquire and deploy its own assets. And this reality, of course, raises the key issue of national filters. Well, thank you for sort of setting the stage about what the leadership will look like. My next question is, what should this new NATO Space Center look to accomplish strategically? And what are the immediate priorities? Uh, this, I think, can be looked at in three ways strategically. First, this is about interoperability, especially yeah. with regard to the frontline East European states. The West European states have already, already largely undergone military transformation with, the or, with its origins, origins roughly in the mid-1990s in response to dramatic U.S. military technological developments first displayed in the Gulf War. Space was and remains central to these developments as an essential enabler for terrestrial military operations. The Eastern Europeans have lagged far behind for reasons of simple modernization out of the Soviet years and the association costs borne. Thus, the Space Center should be seen as a means to facilitate interoperability, especially with the frontline allies, and also reflects recent U.S. decisions to bolster the military process presence pardon me, in the front line as a means to deter Russia. Second, it is in response to the new generation of space-related threats, particularly Russian hypersonic vehicles, and the importance of space-based assets in support of both NATO missile and air defense requirements. Mm -hmm which have been identified as a NATO priority in the new strategic deterrence world. Finally, and maybe most importantly, it is politically important as a symbol of the continuing strategic significance of the alliance for both sides of the Atlantic, especially in light of the rhetorical state of an alliance divided. In this regard, it will be a key element integrating North American deterrence and defense requirements with NATO Europe and a mechanism to support the U.S. move to join all domain command and control on a global basis. Naturally, I think the most immediate priority is the infrastructure and the development of information pathways and protocols for the movement of information and analysis. Well, Dr. Ferguson, now that we set this stage from a leadership angle and from what the priorities are moving forward, the last question I have for you, which is obviously very important, is how should this space center look to interact with other organizations like NASA or the European Space Agency on a civilian level? I think interaction with civil agencies is very important not least of all because they possess valuable assets for NATO space requirements. And even the United States continues to rely upon civilian systems. Whether NASA, the European Space Agency, or national space units and their political, whether, pardon me, NASA, <laughs> no problem. the European Space Agency, or national space units and their political masters will be willing to engage directly, say by, by providing liaison posts in the center, remains to be seen, especially given their peaceful use of space mandates. Nonetheless, space is a dual use civil defense domain and the arbitrary historical division between them need to be overcome as they are simply obsolete. 
Well, Dr. Ferguson, thank you so much for uh, sharing your insight with us. I'm sure this is not the last time we'll be talking about this, and hopefully we'll be able to get back to you here soon uh, to hear more of your expertise on it. Thank you very much. Look forward to it. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.